504, psychrometric chart is provided on page 83 for your possible use in answering this question. An air handling unit coil with chilled water entering at 50 degrees is shown in the figure. The unit serves one room of a factory where product with a large moisture release is being produced. Face and bypass control is used to maintain the room air at 80 degrees dry bulb and 50% relative humidity. The chilled water coil cools the air to 58 degrees dry bulb, 56 wet bulb leaving the coil. Under all conditions, 20,000 CFM of supply air is delivered to the room, and 5,000 CFM of outside air is used for ventilation. The bypass damper is closed at maximum load when the outside air is 90 degrees dry bulb, 74 degrees wet bulb. At the maximum load conditions, the total refrigeration load in tons, neglecting duct losses, is most nearly what? So, they have this arrangement where there's a bypass of the coil. So they do some dehumidification using the coil, but from a discharge temperature perspective, some of that recirculated air is bypassing the coil. So there's mixing after the discharge, and that's the air that gets supplied. Now, regardless of this bypass scenario, there's always some air being exhausted and then some air being recirculated and outside air being introduced. And that has nothing to do with whether they're doing any bypass or not. That's always happening. They've asked specifically about the case where the bypass damper is closed because they're at maximum load. They're trying to get all of the air over the coil because they need to do as much cooling as possible. And we know the outside air conditions, so we can actually simplify the situation and pretend that this bypass doesn't exist. We can just neglect that. But the exhaust and outside air stuff does need to be taken into consideration. So let's put some of the numbers they gave us onto this diagram. The stuff that's coming back from the room, the return air, we know it has a temperature of 80 degrees and a relative humidity of 50%. We also know 5,000 CFM of outside air is being introduced. So of the 20,000 that was supplied, 5,000 had to have been exhausted in order to allow for that outside air to be introduced. So this volume of return air is only 15,000 CFM. Then you have this outside air, 5,000 CFM. We've been given the dry bulb temperature of that to be 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And the wet bulb temperature is 74 degrees Fahrenheit. So that condition is fully defined. And then there's going to be mixing before the inlet to the coil. So since we know both of those volumes, we can do a mixed air calculation to find out what the air entering the coil, what its temperature is. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll call this point right here the mixed air condition. So TMA, and just to simplify the calculation so I don't have to write 15,000 and 5,000, suffice it to say that this is three quarters of the air and this is one quarter. So we'll just say 0.75 of the 80 degree air. I'm just gonna do dry bulb mixed air calculation plus 25% of the 90 degree air. You can probably do that math in your head, but that's gonna come out to 82 and a half degrees. So that's the mixed air before the coil, 82 and a half. And if you're curious to know the humidity as well, you can do this same exercise on the psych chart by spotting these two states and then drawing a straight line between them and then find 82.5 along that line and then just look at the relative humidity curves to see. It turns out that even though it's a slightly higher temperature than the return air because of the way the relative humidity curves are shaped, it actually still ends up being pretty close to 50%. So RH is about 50%. I don't know that we need that, but I was just curious to, I always wanna have a fully defined state, so I didn't want to write a temperature and not write something else in addition to it that would make it seem that this state wasn't fully defined. It is fully defined at this point. And we're gonna to need to pick the enthalpy off for that condition as well. So look that up from the same point. I'm assuming as I work through this problem that you are working through it with a psychrometric chart and finding each of these points from the chart so it doesn't look like I'm just pulling them out of thin air. By the time you're working on problems of this level of detail, I expect that you're very comfortable looking up things on the psych chart. And when I say that a state is fully defined, that means you know two things about it and therefore you can know all other things about that state. So we find the temperature, relative humidity, we can find anything else. Let's also find the enthalpy of that mixed air condition from the psych chart. I get about 33 BTU per pound. And we're gonna need that in a little bit when we work out the total capacity. Let's also find the enthalpy of the supply air. It told us the chill water coil cools the air to 58 and 56. And fortunately, since we're not doing any bypass, we can be confident that 
the condition leaving the coil is the same as the supply air. So that's very useful. Based on these two things, that state is fully defined, which gives you enough information to go into the psych chart again and look up the enthalpy of the supply air, which works out to about 24 BTU per pound based on the dry bulb and wet bulb temperatures that we have. So where are we going with this? We want to find the total refrigeration load. So the total amount of enthalpy or energy that's removed from the air as it grows, goes across the coil is Q equals M dot delta H, where delta H is the difference between the enthalpy of the mixed air entering the coil and the supply air leaving the coil. And we know the volume is 20,000 CFM across the coil, so we can turn that into a mass flow rate. So let's expand this equation a bit. Mass flow rate is density times volume flow rate, and our delta H is gonna be H of the mixed air minus H of the supply air. And now we can begin to plug in. I'm gonna come down here just so that I have a lot of room. I like to work out the specific volume from the density on the side sometimes just to simplify the substitution. So density is one over the specific volume. Also get the specific volume from the psychrometric chart. In this case, I used the supply condition to look up the specific volume because it said the supply air is always 20,000 CFM. I suppose I could have used the mixed air. It would have got a slightly different specific volume and therefore a slightly different density, but in all likelihood, close enough for all intents and purposes. So in this case, 13 and a quarter cubic feet per pound for the supply. And that works out to a density of about 0 0.075 pound per foot cubed. And now we're ready to make the substitution. So 0 0.075 pound per foot cubed for the density times the volume flow rate, 20,000 CFM times 60 minutes in an hour. Don't forget that gets rid of minutes. Also get rid of feet cubed. And now the difference in the enthalpies across the coil, 33 minus 24, and that has units of BTU per pound. That gets rid of pounds, so we should be left with BTU per hour, and that's 810,000 BTU per hour. They asked for the answer in tons, so to convert that to tons, we have to divide it by 12,000 BTU per hour per ton. And BTU per hour goes away, we're left with tons q dot equals 67.5 tons pretty close to answer choice c